Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. Today we're going to learn how to sort two-dimensional arrays. And here is one example. So in this example we are going to sort the array according to our one-dimensional array where we stored the name. So we want the names in alphabetical order. So the top part here looks the same as I did in one-dimensional arrays. Remember the minus one there to prevent a, an access violation when you go i out plus one here. Yeah? And then your inner loop starts at i out plus one to the counter. There is a lesson on one-dimensional arrays for the grade 11s where you can revise this. But this code really needs to be studied. My if statement here is what determines according to what I'm sorting. So I'm sorting according to array name. And inside of my begin and end, I need to swap the values around. So you start and end with your keeper variable. Make this keeper variable the same data type as your array that you are swapping. And you can start with either I out or I in. But what is important is that in the next line, if I out is on the right, in the next line, I out must be on the left. And then I in will be on the right. And if I in is on the right, I in must be on the left. And we end again with our keeper. So if you can draw these red arrows across your screen, you know your code is correct. But we can't just swap our names around. Imagine your teacher sorted your names and she didn't sort your mark. Some will be lucky because they'll maybe have a higher mark and some will be sad because they'll be have a lower mark. So therefore inside of this if statement we need to now also swap our values in our two-dimensional array. Remember the columns stay the same. So our columns were term 1 to 4. So therefore the columns are going to stay in the same terms but it's our rows that we are swapping. So my array mark was an integer. So I'm declaring a local variable I keep as an integer to start and end with. And then I start swapping my values around, keeping my column the same. So you'll see I call is just the same everywhere. But now putting I out on the right, I out on the left, and then I in on the right, I in on the left, and then ending off with my keeper. So this here is the end for this for loop. And then the end here is the end for my if statement. This example looks pretty much the same. You'll see the top part still is the same. But this time I'm sorting the mark according to the learner's first mark. So I'm comparing I out and I in but for the column number 1 in my array. And if I find that the one is greater than the other, I start swapping around same as we did in the previous program. Don't worry too much whether this is greater than or less than. If your output is the wrong way around, so let's say I had to sort from smallest to largest, but now my output is showing largest to smallest, I just swap this for the other one. Here's just my for loop to also swap my mark, so all of it really looks the same. Here is another one. So this is actually sorting each learner's mark from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. So therefore, I have this extra for loop here at the top so that I can go to, let's say, for example, person 1. And then within that, I'm sorting their marks according to lowest to highest or highest to lowest. And I'm using my columns to swap them around. That's why you'll see the for loop here is going from 1 to 3. So it's 1 less than 4. Remember, we had 4 marks. And then this bit still looks the same, but I'm going to 4 because I have 4 marks. And then here is the line that determines according to what I'm sorting. So I'm still in, let's say, learner 1, and I'm comparing their marks to each other. And if I find that I out is bigger than I in, the columns, then I swap these values around. I'm not swapping the names around because... The names stay in the same place. The row stays the same. I'm just sorting the columns from lowest to highest or highest to lowest, depending on what you put there. This is now to, your time to practice again. So go back into our marks program and complete the button sort to sort by name. And remember to sort your marks with your names that you're sorting. Here you are required to sort according to the lowest mark. So this column here, that is your fifth column in your 2D array. 
and this is the last button for sorting so now you're going to try a little challenge here is the button to sort by the name and it's basically the same as the example that we did so your outer loop going up to minus one your inner loop starting at i out plus one and comparing the name in your if statement swapping the name and then also swapping the marks and remember that this is only done in the RAM so you won't see anything until you click or call the procedure display and this is sorting the mark according to the learner's lowest mark there we go we are comparing the value in the fifth column and then swapping them around and then display Calling my display procedure, I just added this to my cells so that I can display in row 0, uh, the fifth column, I'm displaying the label lowest. So here we are comparing the marks, so I want to sort each learner's mark and within that I want, so each learner's mark is sorted within the row, so I'm comparing the columns with each other. That I call my display procedure, but you had to take note of the headings. The headings here had the marks sorted, so we need to display the marks from the highest to the lowest, as well as the labels. This is what I'm talking about here, so I want to say mark 4, 3, 2, and 1. And I can hard code it, but you can also use a for loop. And I'm just using 5 minus 1. So when I call is 1, I'm going to display 5 minus 1, and that's 4. So if you are using my books, you will see appendixes at the back, and each one of them has an appendix that shows you a table like this, which allows you to practice certain final and supplementary papers. The papers can be downloaded from this website here, and what you need to do is you need to go and practice the 2D arrays. I've given you the skill, but now it is a case of you applying it. And you'll see that one of the questions even had 2D arrays. There's another one here in our OOP question. Just an explanation quick. Up to here, you'll see there's only three questions. And then from here, from the exemplar, we had um, four questions. So this is how you can expect your questions. We'll have our question three will be OOP. And then question 4, where it says 12, it will be two-dimensional arrays, really. And then 11s will be one-dimensional arrays, but still the more challenging questions, similar to the question 3s here. Grade 12s, this is really it from me. Um, you can now go back into maybe the grade 11 playlist and just revise your one-dimensional arrays. I'll be adding some grade 10 and 11 videos soon. So, hope to see you in those videos and maybe we have some time to do a past paper for uh, one of the two-dimensional arrays which I will post next. Hope to see you soon!